This is Benro Polaris, a motorized head for a tripod that can do so many creative shots. It also, it also has star tracking capabilities and it doesn't even require polar alignment, which is crazy if you think about it. Other things that it can do, it uh, includes, for instance, shooting all of the panels automatically for a 360 degrees full dome panorama of the night sky. It can also do, of course, a smaller chunk of the sky as well. It can also do a tracked panorama, which means that all of the panels of the panorama are tracked without, with, with regards to the movement of the stars across the sky, which is something that no other device, at least to my knowledge, can do as of today. And it is very exciting. And it can, of course, do other things like uh, moving time lapses and that sort of stuff. I'm going to focus mostly on astrophotography, however, in this video, but as you can imagine, uh, most of these features can also be used for daytime photography and videography. Is this device perfect? No, there are some quirks that I'm going to get to later in the video, so make sure to stick around for that. But it has been pretty great for me for the past few weeks that I have been using it here in the sunny, well, mostly sunny Spanish Mallorca, an island in the Mediterranean. So let me show you what I have found out about this device and, well, my experiences with it. So let's get started. Alright, so before we begin, a couple of disclosures. Uh, I have received this mount from a Benro distributor in Poland, my home country, which is called Fototechnica. I'm going to put some links to them uh, down below in the description. They have provided this test sample because this device is not yet currently on the market, which I'm going to get to um, later on in this video. However, this is a totally independent review. So whatever I say to you, you can, you can consider completely honest. So, um, well, f first, let me actually show you uh, how to set it up for astrophotography and how easy that is. And what do I mean by that it doesn't require any polar element? And by doing so, you will also see what kind of components go into that, because the tripod is, of course, a separate thing. And we're talking about the head, which is, you know, from here upwards. So in order to set this up, we are starting with just a tripod. So first, we need to remove the normal tripod ball head. And then we need to take this main unit of Polaris. On the bottom here, you can see a 3 8 of an inch uh, screw and also a groove for Arca Swiss uh, plates or clamps. And if you're mounting this on some kind of an accessory or leveling plate or whatnot, you can use the Arca Swiss groove, but I'm just gonna screw it in using the 3 8 of an inch standard tripod um, screw. Uh, so after doing that, we have to put on top of that the Astro attachment. This is something that comes only in the Astro kit of Polaris, but this is what allows you to do the star tracking capabilities. So you just mount it here. This is a um, Arca Swiss um, interface. So you can put on top of that just a standard Arca Swiss plate and the camera or this Astro attachment. So after connecting, after uh, mounting that here and securing the bolt, you have to actually connect the Astro attachment to the main unit using a, a provided small USB-C cable which you can plug it in in these two sockets to make it work. Then you can turn on Polaris by double clicking the power button and the second click should be held for a couple of seconds. So quick click and then hold. This is what turns on Polaris and then we have to connect to it using a mobile app. So whether you are using an iOS or Android, you can download the Benro Polaris app and then connect to this device. You do so by uh, selecting the Wi-Fi that it creates and just connect to that. And then you have this interface which you can use to control this unit. There are a ton of things here. I'm not gonna get into all of them at this in, th at, in this video, maybe in subsequent videos. However, you can use these joysticks to basically control how Polaris moves. Then you need to uh, level this thing and uh, in order to level it, you should double tap on the joysticks on your phone, just like that, double tap, and it will bring it into uh, the leveling position. So then you should put some kind of a, I don't know, spirit level or just a phone with a, uh, with a with level app, leveling app on your phone. You can put it up over there and then level Polaris. You can do that by using a leveling plate on the bottom, or if you don't have that, you can just adjust the lengths of the tripod legs in order to achieve level. And this is what I have been doing and it works great. 
and then what you have to do is you have to mount your camera on top of that so you just put your camera with an arca swiss plate on top of here you screw in this little screw and then you secure everything with the clamp on the other side and then it will prompt you to do a calibration and to do the calibration you need to do two steps first you show it what kind of azimuth is uh, does it have so you need to put your phone parallel and close to polaris just like that and it will use the gyro information compass information from your phone and uh, write it into polaris and then point somewhere in the night sky then i would suggest to turn on the camera before actually connecting camera to the polaris to polaris uh, I would suggest to turn on the camera and uh, focus using manual focus uh, on your lens. Just focus on a bright star normally like you would. Just zoom in in live view, focus on any star. Make sure you are not uh, in autofocus mode on the camera. And then you can connect Polaris to your camera. Because once you connect Polaris to a camera, you're not going to be able to control the camera directly and see anything on the LCD screen, which is kind of a bummer. But... Um, it may be just an intrinsic feature of how uh, connecting a camera, a particular camera to a con computer like a PC uh, or something like this uh, works. Then it's time to connect the camera to Polaris, which you can do using an appropriate cable. In my case, it's a USB-C to USB-C cable that came in the box. So I just plug one end to the camera and the other to this port on Polaris. And then you can select a star that you want to go to uh, initially. It does require some kind of a knowledge of the night sky, uh, what, kind of a st what kind of stars are visible. But if you're working from um, you know, a location with a limited view, like, like here on this terrace, you don't necessarily need to see Polaris, which could be obstructed by something. Or maybe it's not a building, maybe it's some high trees on the edge of a forest just points to some a bright star that you can see and you can use any other uh, augmented reality app to tell you uh, how, how the star the bright star that you are seeing is called so i can just do that using sky guide on ios that i i have been using a lot lately and you can see that the brightest star here in my field of view is regulus so i'm just going to put that into the polaris app and then go to that you can see that there is some kind of a warning that it may be below the horizon. I would I would suggest that it's some kind of a quirk and issue with, with the app itself that will be updated in the future. But don't worry about that, just click continue and it will sort of slew to this star. And then after it slews, you need to actually adjust its position to make sure that the center of the frame is exactly at the star. This is crucial for tracking accuracy. You can do that by using those joysticks, then you can tap on the joystick to get the fine-tuned controls. You can also use the big knobs here on Polaris to manually do those fine adjustments. And then you just click continue, start tracking, and it starts tracking. And then you can point anywhere using joysticks, and you can take your exposures, you can do that from within the app. Or if you want, you could even disconnect your camera and control it um, sort of manually, because the tracking is ongoing and the mount is aligned and it works really well so how does it track you might ask well it actually tracks really really well i've been using it with a 28 um 28 millimeter uh, from sigma which is what i'm mostly using for wide field milky way photography and it works great for like one minute two minute exposures with an ha filter no problems whatsoever you might ask uh, if this kind of amount, because this is not an equatorial mount, this is not a mount that you um, align its axis of rotation with the axis of the Earth. This is a mount that has three independent axes of rotation. One of them is level to the ground, the other one is par parallel to that, and the third one sort of is in different positions depending on the tilt. However, Polaris is being smart enough to figure out what orientations of those axes are, and it actually turns all of these three axes simultaneously when it is tracking in order to compensate for field rotation. So this is perfect for astrophotography because you don't have any field rotation. You can have long sessions shooting an object and the field will not rotate as it would with a traditional alt azimuth mount. And it can even handle beefier setups. For instance, it can handle a hefty Sigma 135 lens, which is pretty heavy. And also it is a pretty long focal length and tracking accuracy with 135 is also great. I was able to shoot one minute exposures with Polaris and the stars were perfectly round. Uh, I have a guy on Instagram that follows me who said that he's been using Polaris and 
he was pulling two minutes of exposures with a 200 millimeter lens which is crazy to think about and the motors are pretty strong you don't need any counterweights any additional clutter to this mount it's actually very compact and very travel friendly which is one of the big advantages of this mount it's really easy to pack it into a backpack and take with you if you're taking a flight to a, some some place you didn't, don't need to take counterweights a, a big mount it is certainly smaller than like a star adventure to pack into your backpack which i like a lot so yeah even with longer focal lengths it works great here's uh, an image that i have taken recently this is actually a panorama of uh, a few vertical panels uh, and then of course the ground is also a few panels untracked and as you can see even if we zoom in the stars look pretty well so tracking accuracy i think it's pretty great uh, given that you align it correctly so what else can it do like i said it can um well actually let me mention one thing because i have seen people complain about it on forums if you want to it polaris expects that this plate right here is sort of parallel um, it sort of goes in this direction so if you have a if you have a, an L bracket on your camera and you want to do vertical shots then the plate the Arca Swiss plate that is here on the L bracket is not going to be in a good direction with regards to how this is mounted so you need something like this this is an Arca Swiss plate and an Arca Swiss clamp that is screwed in sort of with a 90 degrees uh, orientation with respect to each other so if I want to use that, and this is how I used it for this Milky Way shot, with a vertical orientation, I would screw in this clamp, this sort of adapter, if you will, onto the Arco Swiss uh, interface of the L bracket, and then just put it in Polaris like this. So I can just slide it in, and just like that. This is how this would go. So, uh, of course, this is the orientation that I would also use it for panoramas because panoramas are better made in a vertical orientation to include as much vertically as possible. And this thing is also capable of shooting uh, untracked. This is what I what I use for a big, like, full-down panorama. I shoot them untracked. This is a couple of panoramas that I have shot recently in, in, in January. And this is a winter Milky Way and a pretty cool location in the mountains. And I have been shooting these untracked because it's it's easier sort of on the post production. And if you if you do panoramas um, which are really large, you can get away with using higher ISOs because the noise is not that visible. So you can do them untracked even with an ISO of like 8,000 or 10,000 on a camera like an EOS R, uh, which is not that great when it comes to handling low light situations and higher ISOs. I may do a future video why that is, why with a panel you can do higher ISOs and it is okay. So if you want to learn about that, uh, definitely stay tuned to my channel. And I have been using this in the untracked panel. Uh, I actually have been testing it just on this terrace. I haven't gotten an actual shot, a panel like a, of the night sky that I would you know, share on Instagram. I am planning to do that tomorrow. So stay tuned on my Instagram uh, link down below if you want to see how that went. But after those preliminary tests, I can say that it's very capable of doing so. It keeps the overlap percentage. You can, you can put the overlap percentage that you want in the app and it will keep it. Uh, and in order to sort of make it go, it's, it's, it's quite easy. You just set the um, sort of left, top, top left corner you know, using those joysticks and then hit one button and it records when the panorama should start. And then you slew into the bottom right corner sort of diagonally and then set the other position and it will do all the rows and, and, and columns in order to complete this panorama using the overlap uh, that you have provided. You just need to put in the focal length, the sensor size, the overlap percentage, and it will do it. And the overlap is great, there are no gaps. However, what I have found is that it tends to over rotate a little bit. So for instance, for a 360 panorama, I would go up, set my endpoint, like the first point of the panel up, and then tilt all the way down and then do a rotation 360 degrees around the azimuth and set the endpoint. And then what it will do is that every rotation, every azimuth rotation will rotate a little bit further than 360 degrees, which is not bad because uh, it, it covers all of the area. It just over rotates a little bit, but also vertically it tries to rotate more than I set it uh, on the on the bottommost position, which hits sort of the limit of how far it can go. 
and then it may abort the panorama in some situations in the current version of the software. It's not that big of a deal because the bottom row I can always set it up again and it will just do the bottom row again, but this is something that they will probably fix in um, further updates to both firmware and software. And by software, I mean uh, software like iOS app, iOS app and the firmware on Polaris. Um, it can also do untracked, uh, sorry, uh, it can also do tracked panoramas. And by tracked panoramas, I mean that all of the panel of the panorama is tracked with regards to how the stars are moving. And people are very excited about that. This is actually a newly added feature. They added it like maybe a month ago to, to the app. And it works a little bit differently than the untracked panel currently, which is that you don't set the in and out position of the panel but you need to know kind of the angles how how much of um how much of an angle do you want to rotate vertically and horizontally so you need to know the angle of view of your particular lens in order to calculate the overlap and whatnot like i said i am using untracked uh, i'm shooting untracked for the wide super wide panels however with tracked panels you can also do wide stuff which I think that you don't really need to. However, what you can do with track panoramas is do a detailed mosaics with a longer focal length. So for instance, you can take 135 and you can shoot the core region of the Milky Way or maybe Orion or something. And you can have a couple of panels which are automatically uh, tracked. And this sounds great on paper. However, this feature is not yet there, I think. Uh, like I said, it's, it has just been added to the app. They really need to polish it a little bit. For instance, you cannot set how many shots do you want per panel. It will just do one shot per panel and then done. So you'd have to restart it again and again and again in order to get the amount of panels, uh, the amount of shots per panel that you wish. They will probably fix it in the future because they have been developing this uh, app and reacting to people's comments very, very quickly. There is a group on Facebook um, that people are sort of discussing about it. They are uh, reporting it to the Benro team and those people are, are, are quick and to fix any issues that people find, uh, which is great. And also currently I have been shooting, I have been testing with 135 and I would say that the tracking is not, there are some quirks and issues with tracking. As you can see on this shot, the stars are not round. There's this kind of L shaped movement uh, that happened during an exposure. So the tracked panel, it, I'm sure it will be polished, but as of today, it's not exactly there yet. Um, however, yeah, it is very exciting if they finally fix it. Um, so I will definitely test it again uh, after an upgrade of firmware or, or the app to see if they improved it. Uh, what else it can do? Well, it can do, um, it can do moving time lapses. So for instance, uh, if you have, uh, you can do like, a, I don't know, if you do Instagram reels or stuff, you can put your camera in a vertical position and you can do a moving time lapse of how the Milky Way is rising. This is what I also tried recently and it worked really well. The way you do it is that you set your uh, first position and then your last position and then you set how many shots do you want to take and it automatically calculates how fast should it be moving the head in order to uh, complete this uh, this this movement and it will stop at every position uh, to to get your shot if your shot is a couple of seconds long so your shots are not blurred it's not like a continuous movement it is aware how it is um, sort of using the shutter of the camera. What is also great is that your phone does not need to be constantly connected to Polaris while it's doing its thing. You can set up what you need and then disconnect and Polaris will keep doing what you told it to. And because it is controlling the camera directly via USB uh, through you know, a cable like this, it can uh, it also knows when the exposure is over this is something that has been annoying me like crazy with traditional intervalometers is that if i plug in a traditional intervalometer to this camera and set it on continuous shooting it doesn't know where the camera is done taking an exposure and processing and ready for the next one and sometimes i would miss an exposure because the intervalometer tries to shoot another exposure while the previous one is not done yet this one, however, will wait until the exposure is done in any situation. So if you put in your camera like a two seconds delay in order to make sure everything is stable after a slew, then it will wait those additional two seconds and then wait until the image is downloaded to the SD card and processed and the camera is ready to take the next one. And only then it will take the next exposure so it will not miss any of the exposures. So, um, 
like I said, uh, this is, well, maybe I didn't say it, and maybe it's a good time to say it, that this is, uh, this Benro Polaris head started as a Kickstarter uh, campaign. It has been backed by a handful of people, and Benro team has been developing it. Currently, it's in a stage that they have shipped a few units to some of the backers and also some of, like, distributors that provided uh, these units to people like me, reviewers on YouTube. Uh, they plan to do like a pre-production um, sort of pre, um, pre-order in China, I think in June. This is what the latest news is. So it is coming to the market uh, soon. However, it is not there yet. So like I said, it is in a phase that they are still developing it. Uh, some of the issues that I have highlighted um, are just because the product is so young. And by the time... By the time it hits the market, maybe those issues will be already resolved uh, or maybe they will resolve it on the way. Like I said, a lot of those things can be fixed by software. I didn't find any issue with this device that is like a hardware issue. I think most of the issues are just in software. So I'm sure that they will get it fixed. Uh, one of the most like annoying things currently is that when you plug in a USB into your camera, you cannot, con- you cannot see anything on the LCD and you cannot control the camera. I think it really is related to what kind of camera are you using. Maybe on some cameras you don't have this issue, but on Canon cameras you do. So what I would appreciate for things like fine focusing, because it's better to focus on the LCD than on the app, just because the app is wireless and there is some sort of a, you know, you cannot really get full quality that you have on the LCD on those previews. Uh, so I would, I would suggest to have like a switch in the app that you can just turn off the connection to the camera and then turn, turn it back on again. Maybe they will add it because currently what I have to do is I have to unplug this cable from the camera. If I want to like review the photos on the camera or change focusing or something, and then you have to plug it in again to control the camera from the app. So it's a little bit of an annoyance, but definitely not a deal breaker at all. One of the other issues I have found is that the go-to catalog is pretty limited at this point. So for instance, if I wanted to slew to, um, um, man, this rooster is really loud. I hope it's not that annoying to you. Uh, when I wanted to slew to Leo's triplet in Leo, which is close to Regulus, um, visible from this terrace angled in this um, direction, there was no Leo triplet in the go to catalog. I had to sort of manually well, eyeball where Leo's triplet might be. Uh, it's not convenient, especially if in long focal lens. For wide shots, it's not a big deal at all because you can see the landscape, you can see the stars. Uh, in live view on your camera so you can do it this way but with a long focal length it might be a bit tricky to find it so I'm hoping that they will also update the go-to catalog because uh, it would be ideal to have something like NGC objects in there or Messier objects uh, and I'm pretty sure that they will add it as well this is again something that uh, they are still probably working on so overall so far would I recommend this mount? Well, the mount is actually quite expensive. Uh, from what I have read, it will the Astro kit with this attachment will be retailing for twelve hundred dollars, I think, which is pretty expensive. It's actually more than twice as much than sorry something like a Star Adventure. Star Adventure is five hundred something, and it's going to be twelve hundred. However, I would say that this is a better option for travel. It packs nicer into a backpack. It is capable of handling longer focal lengths without the counterweights and without the clutter. So you can also take advantage of that while you are traveling. Um, It also is way smarter than a Star Adventure because like I said, it can do all sorts of time lapses, mosaics, panoramas, track panoramas, and track panoramas. You can get a variety of shots if you're in some cool place. It definitely is not a replacement for like a go-to mount for telescopes and stuff where you would like to have guiding and dithering and all that stuff. So it's not a replacement for that if you have like an observatory at home, but for traveling uh, either by plane or just by car to drag site locations, I think this is perfect, especially for like wide field Milky Way photography, panoramas, but also, you know, things like um, a little bit narrower fields with 135, like I have mentioned. And again, the cool thing is that for astrophotography, it doesn't require polar alignment to Polaris. So if you're in a place that you don't see Polaris, maybe you have a building behind you, maybe you have high trees behind you, or maybe you are close to the equator and Polaris is so low on the horizon that you barely can see it, then this is going to be perfect because you can just pick any star to do the celestial alignment, this is how they call it, and it will just track 
without any issues. So I would definitely recommend this mount. I am going to be using it myself. I actually had this on this trip along with a different tracker, which I took, <laughs> sorry, which I took as a backup. And I haven't even picked this other uh, tracker from the backpack. I have been using this exclusively and I'm going to continue using this. Uh, I am very, very happy with this product. There will be some relevant links uh, down below in the description to the Kickstarter campaign so you can learn more about this device. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is pretty great. It has a lot of potential. Like I said, it's a young product. They will need to polish a few things with software to make it really, really perfect, which they probably will at the rate that they are developing um, the updates at this point. Um, really great for travel, really great for a variety of shots, great for Milky Way, great even for tighter shots, no counterweights, no polar alignment. I would highly, highly recommend to check it out. Check it out when it hits the market, what kind of a price uh, will it have finally. And yeah, I have, I will be doing subsequent videos about this. I may be doing like a more detailed video about a particular feature, how to, um, you know, how to pull it off. Like, like maybe I will do a video about the panorama or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. But definitely subscribe to my channel down below to stay tuned for future videos about Polaris and about other things with regards to astrophotography and stuff. Check out the links to uh, the people that have uh, provided me this mount. Uh, they have uh, some cool stuff that you can purchase from them as well. Again, sorry for the rooster. I'm gonna be wrapping up. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for future videos. Uh, like this video if you liked it, I would really appreciate. And check out my Instagram. I will be posting more pictures, uh, more stuff that I have taken with this mount from this trip uh, soon. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, see you next time, hopefully. Bye-bye.